Your English is good. Thanks, Leo. <laughs> anyway, what you have here is three phases and taken off from each phase, it's, it's a wire that mm -hmm. goes to a fuse. A fuse? Yeah, that's that little uh, uh, tube that you see attached to, in parallel to a insulator, to an okay, insulator. I think I see it, yeah. And it has a little hook uh, loop. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's uh, when the fuse blows, that uh, the hook comes down. Or, so it's more of a mechanical fuse than yeah. it actually breaks. Yeah, it's a, there's an element inside okay. a tube. Oh, I see it. Actually, I do okay. see it. I don't think it's coming out on the camera, but... Yeah. From the tube, on the other side of the tube, you jump over, if you look at the uh, cross arm with big caps... Right. ...closer to us, that is known as a pothead. That's where the termination is for... or the termination for the underground cable coming in. Right. Okay? Now, when you go down, this each phase, each cable has a center conductor and insulated there is a ground. Uh, okay. Uh, just like coax. Right. A ground on the outside of the cable. This is insulated for safety purposes. But you can see below the pothead, about a foot from here, you see a little wire going up back to the cross arm. Right. That is your ground system. And the three faces have the same thing. They're all connected together to a ground system. And the ground is uh, the lower conductor on the flat cross arm. You see the, the cross arm with three faces? Right. Below it, about two or three feet, mm -hmm. is a ground. It's another cable or wire it's, it's your ground. And can you tell by looking at this what voltage this system starts out at? Yes, I know. It's a uh, public service company uses 7600 volts phase to ground or 13.8 kV phase to phase. In, a, in this typical arrangement. Yeah. And then earlier we were talking about the substation and those huge voltages to run power across country and can you tell me again what the standard was for that it was like I ran into 230 kilovolts yesterday and f tell me from there what were the different levels of voltage yeah but usually around town is 115 kV okay the transmission voltage is 230 kV in this area and between power plants is usually 345 kV minimum and you said at times there are 500 kV? So, yeah, back east you'll see 500 kV, 760 kV, and something like 1100 uh, kV or 1020 kV. Incredible amounts of voltage and current, just incredible. Yeah. And then one other thing, because we're running out of time on the clip here, you were explaining in the old days that they used to have the return or the ground actually relied on earth and ground and they gave that up. Why was that? Because it was not very reliable. Uh, people could have voltage, uh, different voltages from house to house due to the uh, non-homogeneous uh, nature of soil. So what they did, and I'm talking about distribution only, not transmission. Uh, so what they had to do was to carry a wire from, sub, from the substation to the home to create a return on uh, Y connected systems. And you said on the larger systems or higher voltages, the ground current was so severe it would corrode pipes and things at times. It would, and I'm specifically talking about DC transmission, DC 500 trip. kV. Okay. And uh, back in California where they started using 500 kV, uh, the return was stray uh, with the straight currents on the return path would create corrosion on pipelines and some uh, distribution systems. Amazing, but it is imaginable such huge amounts of voltage and current traveling through the earth. Amazing. Oh, yeah. It is, uh, it is mind-boggling. <laughs> okay, well I appreciate the information. If you don't mind, I'm going to put this on YouTube just as an informative piece 
uh, so people know a little bit more about electrical distribution and those kinds of things. Oh, yeah, this is a very, very uh, large subject, so I just touched a little bit. Oh, I know, this is just a piece, <laughs> but thanks, Leo. Fantastic. You're quite welcome. Okay, there we have it.